Welcome back to another episode of the Miracle Marketing Podcast, where we bring you interviews from business owners, celebrity guests, and hot topics. I am your host, Brandon Adams, along with my co-host, super producer, Big Perion, who we miss. What's going on, my brother? Where you been? Man, just working, working, working. Just working, man, trying to get back to the podcast. I miss y'all. Man, we missed you. But... You know, I was holding it down for you because I know yes, you're producing those hits that everybody will love that we need to be on the lookout for. Yes, sir. How's everything in the ATL? Uh, it's pretty good, man. It's been pretty chill yeah. uh, weather-wise. Okay. You guys have How about out there? Man, it's Vegas, so you know it's getting hot. <laughs> and we about to hit the hundreds over here. It's, I think we have hit a, a, like the low hundreds, but mm. it's hot. Yep. Yeah, so we had our days. All right. All right. Well, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button. And if you would like to be a guest on the show, send us an email to a miracle podcast. On today's show, we have a very special guest. She is dropping a new book tomorrow out of her series. So without further ado, we're going to bring on the show Miss Yolanda Hatcher, who's going to tell us all about her book and her audio book that will be dropping tomorrow that you all need to pick up. Welcome to the show, Miss Yolanda Hatcher. Wilson, how are you? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm really happy to be here. And yes, I can't believe it's actually dropping tomorrow, which is, I can't, it's just crazy. I can't believe that it's finally here. The day's finally here. So um, thank you so much for having me on the podcast. Okay. So tell us about the series, how did it start? And then before you go into the new book, what kind of, <laughs> you know, brought you to write the series and then going to telling us about the new book that's dropping tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I have always been an avid reader, um, of romance fantasy. Mm -hmm. So, um, when I wrote my first book in 2017, the first part of the series of the first series, I set for on a plan to kind of create a different story, one where there are twists and turns and it kind of reads like a psychological thriller, <laughs> but it's romance fantasy. Okay. Um, and I wanted to evoke a certain feeling for the reader. I wanted the reader to read the book and leave feeling like all the emotions. I want you to feel everything, <laughs> you know? So I kind of wrote it like that. Uh, and so Of Spirit and Fire is a spinoff of the first series. The first series is um, a trilogy and it is uh, of three parts. So there's Ascension 1, Ascension 2, and then Descension. That's the third book. Yeah. And so both of the, of the books have themes of, uh, of romance, uh, magic, prophecies, um, and everything kind of crashes together to create this whirlwind of ups and downs and um, a lot of drama. <laughs> so, uh, and then, uh, so in the first series, uh, all of this takes place in a, a mythological realm called Anwen. So um, if, I don't know if, if any of you are interested in any type of mythology, but I was always interested in mythology and uh, it was all about, for me, like fairies and elves and nymphs and all of these different like creatures. Uh, because all I ever did was read that type of stuff. So I wanted to create something in the same type of world. And so in uh, the first series, it's about the bad guy getting the girl. So there's a, there's a main character, he's a bad guy, and he stays and remains the bad guy throughout the rest of the series. So I was kind of tired of seeing um, stories where there is... Uh, I don't know if you guys ever like saw kind of romance things where it's always like the guy is probably the bad guy and he turns, he changes his ways. And then all of a sudden now he's, you know, the better and at, at up to par to be with the girl who's always the good girl, you know? So I wanted to write a story where the bad guy gets the girl, he stays the bad guy. <laughs> and um, what happens later on is um, the two of them. So he's representative of darkness and she's representative of light. So he's kind of bad and she's good. And so the two of them have to band together in order to save their realm. Um, so that's pretty much the preface of the first uh, trilogy. And then Up Spirit and Fire, uh, the products of Dark and Light, so their children have to um, get together and kind of uh, learn their way how to maneuver around their realm. So they are here they are, they're royalty, 
they are very egotistical, <laughs> um, they are very powerful. And what happens with them is that they have to juggle college life, they have to juggle more prophecies that that circle around them and their story now. And then at the same time, they have to get over themselves to be able to uh, kind of move their way, move their way into their realm, but uh, they get and they end up getting thrown in the middle of a war and this war for power where they're going to be a part of it and they're going to be, um, you know, kind of the main focus and they have to kind of learn how to get over their own egos and to um, open their eyes and see that, you know, there's a lot going on here and life is not just this little bubble because you're royalty and you think that this is, this is your, um, your small world. There's so much more going on. There's people that need you. And so um, it's truly a journey of finding yourself. So there's a lot of ups and downs, a lot, lots of drama, lots of lessons to be learned. And ultimately they have to figure out who they're going to be, who, what are they going to choose? What type of people do they want to be in this new world? And they learn a lot of lessons um, in that process. Ariel, what is your, your process in mm -hmm. when you're creating a, a, a series like this? Um, well, this is a two part question. What is your process <laughs> and um, you, how long does it take you to, to get like the format before you actually start? um pinning you know the emotions and the, the scenes and everything i um so i i think about it a lot I, it's just in my head like i i have always been the type of person that walks around with stories in her head <laughs> so um i also make sure that i watch a lot of things that influence me so that i'm inspired by so different tv shows i listen to music i will you know um just anything that will make me feel like spark spark some type of creativity in me. And once I do that, I'm kind of secretly um, writing down little notes. And then um, as time goes, like right now, I have the next book's notes. <laughs> so yeah. not the book that's coming out tomorrow, but the one that's going to be next. So what yeah. I've done is I always, with, with how big my books are, and I actually have my book here, and it's a huge book. So this is, this is an author uh, proof. And this is a like huge, right? So wow. because I write like this, I need to take notes along the way. And I need to know what happened because my readers will remember it for me if I don't remember it. So my thing is that I make sure that I am constantly taking notes. I'm constantly remembering what happened in the last book so I could connect two sets of stories together. So I can say, okay, last story, this happened. What changes for this character in this story? So I'm all the time just taking notes, but then I'm also kind of making sure I'm surrounding myself with things that inspire me so that I can have that creative mindset so that I can start getting that story down on paper. <laughs> wow, man, that's that that that's amazing. One, the <laughs> thickness of that book, that's like hey, <laughs> hey, that's like three movies. Yeah. <laughs> but but I can tell uh, from the thickness of it that it's very detailed. Yes. You know, yes. So. So in romance fantasy, you have to be very detailed because um, I can say um, I'm, I'm one of the fans. I'm one of the readers of romance fantasy. So as a reader myself, I'm looking for like, where are they? What like build a world for me so I understand it because it's very visual. So in, in fictional stories, it's very visual. visual. Um, you're always looking to kind of set the tone, set the mood, set the, the atmosphere. Like, where are you? And um, what is that feeling that you're feeling in this in this chapter and things like that? So I had to write a lot of that. Um, and I typically like to just get to the point. That's my thing. Like personally, as a writer, get to the point. I want to know what happens. Just, just keep going. But I learned in my process as a romance fantasy writer that people are looking for you know, a breakdown of what is that feeling? Set the tone for this story. What's going on here? Rather than just the dialogue. <laughs> are, all the, are all of your books that thick or is it just that one? No, um, my other books, are, are, I left the other books all over there, but <laughs> um, the uh, other books are smaller. Um, so the, the, the last book was the, the thickest book. So that one was 530 something pages. And this book is 800 pages. <laughs> Wow. Um, wow. And then the first and second books were really small because they were in, they were actually supposed to be uh, one book. 
And then I broke it up into two parts. So there's an Ascension part one, Ascension part two, and then there's that third book, that the big book, um, uh, Descension. The reason why I broke it up into two parts is because I had started off just kind of um, working with a publisher at first and they had said, you know, hey, you need to break your book up because some people might not want to read such a big book for a new author. Um, and so I said, okay, you know, I, I'm very open to, uh, you know, um, any type of suggestion. And so I did that. Um, but I keep thinking I should go back and just like, <laughs> you know, um, put it together and make one, one book, but it works the way it is. People love yeah. to, to kind of pace themselves and it makes sense to pace yourself with this type of story. Um, but it is definitely, um, a story where you're going to end up wanting to read more and more and more because of the way that I set up the, the scene. So um, a lot of people tell me that it reads like a, uh, a movie. <laughs> so, yeah. but I like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, it, and it's, it's, it's not unusual for books to be that thick or thicker, but I think it's, um, I think it's, I think it's dope because <laughs> it, it gives you your own lane, you know, yes. it, it shows that um, you put quality time into your writing. So mm -hmm. people who are avid readers and who who love, you know, um, fantasy romance and everything. This this is their book. That's almost like their their um, their main book that they would have on their their bed, their nightstand, or on their coffee table. You know, this is the one, and then all the other books sit around it. You know, so that's dope. Yes, that's yes, dope. thank you, <laughs> Brandon. <laughs> So do you plan on turning these into a movie? Have you ever thought about writing a movie or a TV series? I did a million times. I would love that. Um, there are a number of, um, surprisingly, there are a number of um, like production companies that I've heard of who do like short movies based upon books. And so I've been thinking about doing that because I, I think even if it's just like a, a cute little short clip of some sort I think that would be really cute to have as part of the um experience for the reader so um but yeah I definitely a million times because I I write my book like that like I, I already think and and prepare my book in that way so one day you know if I I love to be optioned one day for a movie okay have you ever thought about like the difference between writing a book or have you ever studied the process in doing like a, a screenwriting? No, um, but I'm pretty sure I can get into it because I I have written um, a, like, I guess it was, just, it was just for fun, but it was like a, a play type thing that I've written for fun back in the day when I was a, a kid, um, when I was a teenager. Mm -hmm. uh, but I uh, would love to do that. I would definitely be into that. One other question. Would you prefer to do it as a movie or maybe as a play? Movie because of all of the magical kind of effects I will need <laughs> for it to come across correctly. Yeah. Okay. Well, Marvel may be, may be interested or Disney. <laughs> right? Out, One day. Out to them. Yep. Since they're the same... Yeah. They they're the same company, Marvel and Disney. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I would love and, that. And, and you could put together a um a teaser. I have a client that I, I work with um who writes um science fiction and, and novels and stuff. And what um she's done recently is she would do a um a voiceover. She would read her story. She would mm -hmm. do like a 15 or 20 minute um um clips where she would read you know two chapters oh nice and she would she would put the the uh sound effects of the scene in mm -hmm. the audio and then she would ask me to get the um get video clips and stuff to put with to match the audio oh that's that's beautiful because um, so that's my next step is to put this book on an audio book, right? I, I, on Audible or something like that, you know, on a platform or such as that. And um, this book, I said to myself, because there are what's emerging now in the audio book world, because, you know, I've done my first series on, on Audible um, and I've worked with narrators to do that. 
So they, so people actually auditioned and I chose the narrators based upon that. And, um, you know, I adjusted things here and there. So I kind of was kind of a bit of a director in that moment. Um, yes. But so uh, this book, for sure, I wanted to be on Audible as well. Um, and that's something I'm thinking about down the line um, later on this year. And the way that what's emerging now is companies who are not only creating just the actual audio book where there's, you know, there's a narrator reading everything, they are, are, are now adding sound effects to the audio books. And um, I haven't found a person in the company that want to, the production company to actually do this for me yet, but there mm -hmm. are like, you know, if the person's walking on gravel, you can hear them walking on gravel and things like that. Like, so it's such a descriptive story, but then to add on top of that, like just sound effects, I would love that so much. So I've been looking for someone that to, to produce it for me um, mm -hmm. because you have to kind of shop around and find someone who would be interested. Um, the problem is just kind of um, pulling back because I do have returning characters I need to go back to my old narrators and say, hey, I need you to come narrate this book for me again. So this, these mm -hmm. different chapters, I have a few returning characters as well. So each chapter is a different character kind of telling the story from their point of view. So mm -hmm. I will just need to work with the narrators and make sure they're on board first and then go to the production companies. And the production companies will tell me, you know, all the different things I have to kind of be prepared for and then a potential release date. So that's kind of what... Um, the process would be for the audiobook, but yes, I definitely love that idea with the um, having the sound effects and the individuals too, because I have never tried yes. it that way before. I think that's pretty cool. Yes, and and she what she does is she breaks she breaks the um, um once it's done she'll break it up in clips and she'll put that on IG or whatever to promote her book or whatever. She'll have like different mm -hmm. clips to draw the people mm -hmm. in um, to the story and stuff. No, that's so, that's really cool. I would love to be. I would like to uh, kind of do something like that. I, I don't know. Uh, definitely, let me know. Like, uh, I guess let me know. Yeah. Her, um, I can reach out to her or something. I don't know. That's pretty. Yeah, her, na her name is uh, Laura Tafaria. Laura Safaria. Tafaria. T e f a r i a h. Oh, Tafaria. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Oh, that's yeah. pretty cool. I'm gonna look her up. Okay, thank you. Yes, yes. I think I think that that um um. Well, I actually have. Uh, two friends. The other um, artist's um, name is the Amazing Ninja, and he the does. Um, Ninja. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he does um, comic strips and stuff, but he does uh, music along with the comic oh, strips. Oh, beautiful. Okay. But I think, I think, you it would be good to be able to use that when you're pitching to somebody like Netflix or or mm. um, um, Disney, because now you have a teaser. To right. Your book. So they have something visual to go with, and th they already have the the designers and everybody to um, actually um, make it a full blown production. But just mm -hmm. to have a a scratch pad to go by, I think that would be beautiful and it will work well with the work that you're doing with your books. I don't know. I would love that. I definitely need something to think about to to uh, prepare for because the type of story this is, I'm going to need that type of um, visual to start off just yeah. to kind of get everyone like hyped up for it. So no, definitely. And it's, it's, it's different companies like um, um, uh, Artlist.o, different, um, um, uh, what is it? Uh, stutter, uh, stutter stock or whatever, different. Um, oh, okay. That's, that have footage. Yeah, so like the video, like clips and things. Yeah, and you could just gotcha. put the footage to what you're saying, you know, what find it and then put it to what you're saying. Gotcha. Okay. And build it out that way, you know. Yeah. And then, you and know, that, these days, uh, these days it's like AI for everything. So, like, you can yeah. probably just write what you want and it'll just create it for you. So that's yeah, that yeah, yeah. 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 Just as, just for a teaser. Yeah. Have you, have you thought about doing um, animation? Um, Yes. <laughs> well, because, okay, so for instance, um, like this book, right? I created the entire, the entire cover. Everything's all me, right? So, and what I did was um, I had, uh, what do you call it? I had uh, the, it's called Mid Journey, an AI platform, create my characters. I told them how I want them to look. 
and I went and kind of kept them adjusting it until I got it, they got it right of what I want them to look like. And then I put this all into Photoshop and did a background, added like a tree here. <laughs> like, that's you know, cool. um, cool. I did the font in Photoshop, all of this in Photoshop. And then, you know, the book, the book's fine and all of that. And so um, apparently there is a uh, platform that you can use that creates, that you can do AI uh, clips that look like cartoons. And so I forgot what it's called, but I was like, oh, wait a second. Because if I can like read, the, because you can generate characters to keep looking like each other, uh, look, looking the same every time. Because this, wow. then, then you get really into what they call the seed ID. And okay, so I'm just a nerd when it comes to things like this, because I, start off, I started off like kind of my creativity as an artist, I was always an artist. And then I became a graphic artist and that's just kind of something I do on the side. So I decided, okay, if I'm going to write books, I'm going to create my own cover, you know, things like that. Um, so uh, I get really into it, but anyway, so, <laughs> so you can keep generating. So say I want every, I say, say I want somebody to look like her. Right. Mm -hmm. But you know, sometimes you can, with AI, you can generate things multiple times and it won't look like the person. So what you would do is then you would grab the seed ID for this particular image so that next time you generate it, it'll come up with a similar picture of her. So now you say, say you want her to be, this is like a, almost like a three quarter profile of her. But then wow. next time you want her to, to be looking down, looking up, looking, you know, for, you would write all of that in your prompt, they call it, like they call it a prompt. And you would uh, write, pull over the seed ID from this photo of this picture of her and then it'll just keep generating but you have to keep playing with it but i don't know how it works with like the video because there's an ai platform that does cartoon type things like say i want her to be a 3d kind of cartoon mm -hmm. and i can make her now now she's moving now she's doing things i just don't know what that platform was called but i would totally do that like i think that would be really really fun <laughs> because at the end of the day like i start off as an anime like person like i was like one of those kids who like stayed home and watched anime all the time. And then I started drawing from there and things like that. So that just kind of like hit me a little bit as like, <laughs> I'm like a, a, a memory I had when I was a kid where I used to be really into cartoons. So, Hey, why not? Like anything's possible. <laughs> yeah, for, our, for our older viewers, she's not talking about Tina Turner. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Anime. <laughs> That's an a, a Asian style of, of um, animation. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. The, 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 the design is called anime. A A N I M E. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Spoon like, See, I'm at the middle. I'm a millennial, so I knew that. I knew it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so those, those were bars. I just threw out some bars. <laughs> Yolanda, so. Mm -hmm. Is the by that book being much thicker than the other previous books? Is the price different? Yes, yes. So, and that was um kind of hard for me because um when you're placing things on the um Amazon platform, you have to um it tells you how much the book costs to make, and so you have to decide based upon the cost what it, what it, what do you want your royalties to be? What do you want your profits to be? Once you sell this book, so you have to keep adjusting the price to make sense for you. So everybody has their own thing um and so, uh so for our viewers that want to purchase the book how much is the book going to cost them because it drops tomorrow oh yes okay so it is 29.99 um and uh yes it drops tomorrow and right now you can actually go ahead and pre-order it so that's pretty cool and that the kindle uh is also available for pre-order okay so viewers you hear that you can go ahead and order the book today pre-order it it drops tomorrow so we're giving you the information right now that you can go out and place this book. It's only going to cost $29.99 to place this book, and it's over 800 pages. So it's under mm -hmm. bucks for an 800-page book. There yes. you go. Get the hard <laughs> copy and the Kindle. That way you can, you can always keep the book with you wherever you go, on your phone, your tablet. That's genius. Yeah, very true. Yeah. And it's really fun. I mean, honestly, like for me, as a reader, just to walk around with this in my hand, like, you know, it feels like a, like a, like you're like 
have this really special thing, you know, that you're walking around with. And it's like, a, once you start diving into the story, you're going to be not be able to put it down anyway. Uh, but, um, and again, like you're getting, you're getting a story from a reader. So I am a reader, so I know what people are looking for. <laughs> so, you know, dope. I make sure that I put all of that in there. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and it's, you're, you're a creator, you're creating lives. These are whole stories about people, you know, that you've created, you know what I'm saying? This is like a whole universe, <laughs> You know, it so is. I mean, it, it, it's it's a Bible, basically, you know, it, you, <laughs> you, 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 you have to be as descriptive as, as you are mm -hmm. um, with your books, because you're, you're, you're creating and introducing to the world people that they've never met before, stories they've never heard before, and a whole, it's a whole universe. So I think it's dope um, for you to, to, to just be a creator, period. But I think you know, doing your graphics, writing, and man, I think that's awesome. Congratulations on your book so and the success of it. That's dope. That's Thank dope. You. Really dope. And, okay. and, well, <laughs> well, let me make sure you're African-American. <laughs> oh, yes, I am. <laughs> you're a black woman author. I think that's awesome. 100%. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because you know that uh, they they don't um there's they they're steadily growing mm -hmm. you know um the the um acknowledgement of female um black female authors mm -hmm. out there you know so i think that's great that they're getting the um that you all are getting the spotlight now you know because oh, yeah. it's so so many times um so many years you you had to do research to find out who wrote this, who wrote this, or you would see um, all these different books by um, white female authors. But to get the spotlight on um, black female authors now is is a beautiful thing. Yeah, because we got a lot of stories. Yeah, and I think that we have a lot of stories to tell, um, and a lot of people. And, and, and for me, it just feels that for me, it feels like. You know, I want to be able to put myself out there so that I, I can let the next person know that, hey, you can also do that. You know, you, you can also do this yourself as well, because um, and Brandon helped me realize this. I always say that. Um, and, you know, I used to always think that to be validated, I need to be published. And then Brandon's like, well, why can't you just do this stuff yourself? Like what? Like what's the difference? And, he, and he, you know, he asked it in a question form and I was like, yes you know what, <laughs> yeah. you know, you're right, yeah. you're right, and, and, and on top of that, I'm also Caribbean, so my family's from Guyana, South America, so I get to show those people, as well as, as, well as the, the American, African-American people, just like, hey, you can do anything, you know, you can put yourself together, and you can um, put your stories together, and you can do it yourself, you don't have to have someone um, validate you as a writer, like yes. as long as you put yourself out there and you do the work that needs to be done to, to everything's today it's 2024 like we can just put things out and do it you know yes. we don't have to we have platforms to do these things for yourself mm -hmm. um and so you don't have to kind of have someone uh kind of hold that over you and own your book because and that's all you know they take from us all the time you know what i mean so as if we can if we can do it ourselves and it's even more um that's more validation than anything else. So yes. published. So you you also will be coming up doing something in the Orange County area. Are you able to talk about yes. that? Yes. Uh, so I'm going to be attending. So you guys are going to laugh, but okay. So as like a romance fantasy reader, there it's 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 called now. So 2024. They or I think it started a few years ago, maybe like a a, a handful of years ago they started calling it romanticy. So instead of romance fantasy, it's romanticy. And so uh, uh, it's become its own like subset of, the, of, of, a, of a genre in itself. And mm. with that subset, it has become like this crazy fan base. And um, the, the amount of fan, fanning, fangirls and things like that that happen because of this genre um, is 
crazy to the point where they had to create the, it, their own convention for a romanticy only. So this is probably one of maybe a handful of conventions that are just for romance fantasy. So it's a big deal. Um, so this convention is called Steamy Lit Con. So Steamy Lit Con. <laughs> <laughs> and so because, you know, at the end of the day, the book has, you know, a lot of steamy parts to it. So a lot of spice in there. Um, and people are will come all over the world to attend this this um, convention to see their favorite authors and just kind of rub elbows with all the other fans and things like that. And um, there are fun little like, you know, um, activities and things like that to do and good goodie bags and all that stuff. So I have a friend, Patty, who um, she works in content. And so um, she said, you know, she reached out to me, hey, we should go to Steamy LitCon. And she's, you know, telling me like, you know, this is, this these, these are your fans. Like these are your readers. This is where you have to go to find them. So I have to, I have um, to cut you off, Yolanda, but we're running short of time. Tell oh, the viewers, yes. tell the viewers where, when it will be and where they can find you. Gotcha. Okay. So it's going to be in Anaheim, California. It's going to be August 2nd and 3rd. And it's at the convention center. Uh, it's, um, I don't remember the hotel's name, but it's um, downtown, but it's pretty, you're, you'll pretty much find it because um, you could either look up Simulate Con um, or you can, uh, of course, follow me and I'll be posting about it as well. <laughs> okay. What are your links? Oh, yeah, sure. So on, on Facebook and Instagram, I'm I'm at Yolanda Hatcher Books. And then my website is yolandahatcher.com. So definitely um, subscribe to my newsletter so you're able to follow me as well. All right. Well, we're running short of time. So I thank you for being on the show. Thank Again, you. the book drops tomorrow. So everybody go out and pick that book up. You can order it. Let's support our authors, our self-published authors. And we thank you for taking the time out of your day. And we look forward to more coming from this and also on the audio books. And go check her out at Steamy Lit Con, which is August 2nd and 3rd. Yes. yes. August 2nd and 3rd. That will be in Anaheim, California. You can come meet Yolanda and pick up your books there. And, you know, thank you again for being on the show. Perry, on, you got anything before we go? Uh Thank you for being on our show, and I, I think it's beautiful. I do want to say one disclaimer. Um, all authors are beautiful. <laughs> it doesn't matter what your ethnicity is, but Very I true. do celebrate our, um, our culture because we don't get a lot of that. So I mm -hmm. appreciate you for being on our show, and I, I, I congratulate you on your, your success. Thank all you. Right. Thank you guys so much. No You're problem. welcome. Thank have you for having great, me. Have a great You're day. Welcome. You too. Bye. Bye-bye.